Hello, bonjour, welcome to another production for Nezo's Bad Shop. I am Nezo, hello, and how are you? Ça va? I'm doing pretty good. Ça va bien? Actually, well, ça va très bien. Yes, yes, that's the way. And what you are looking at is the 3 Racing Sakura D5 Opera D5. See it? Opera 5? Yes, this is the Opera. This is the one that has the mono roll front end. Yee! And has uh, the high position front knuckle and rear knuckle. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I'm going to do here is give you a little constructor's digest. And the first thing you're wondering probably is where is the user manual? Well, I left it in the box. Just kidding. For the manual, please press the QR code and download it. So, <coughs> excuse me, instead of downloading it and writing stuff out, uh, because this car was pre-assembled at the factory, I'm just going to go through what I did uh, to prepare the car for running, as you see here with the uh, electrics, uh, electrics installed. Um, yes, first thing you should do with every pre-assembled car, no matter what it is, is check all the screws. Every single screw you see on the car and on the underside of the chassis, check them for tightness and or apply Loctite. If it's a car like this with a lot of aluminum, metal into aluminum, put Loctite. Add a little dab of Loctite to every screw, but do one screw at a time. Take one screw out, dab of Loctite, put it back in. Simple. And when you do that, the car will be a lot better, it'll be tighter, and it'll run properly. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I got a frog in the throat again. This has been happening a lot lately. Um, so, yes, first thing, check all the screws because I did find multiple loose screws throughout the chassis on the bottom side, on the top side. Uh, so, yeah, that was that's definitely a thing of every car you want to do, or every car you get pre assembled, you'll want to check uh, the screws and stuff. Now, the second major thing I found with this particular uh, one in my uh, from the one I ordered the steering rack. The steering dowel there, that silver piece, uh, both the rack itself mounted to that, the screw holding the steering arm to that dowel, loose, and that dowel to the bulkhead on the set screw, loose. So the whole rack was like just flopping like this. And yeah, there's no way that would have run properly. So I basically took the front bulkhead completely off the front end, which is only like about five or six screws total, and did the steering link and the upper link here on the knuckle, and just pulled the whole bulkhead off, fixed the rack as you would uh, as you assemble it with any other D5 kit, and um, I did it that way and tightened everything up. I also checked these, they were tight and actually had Loctite, weirdly, but they had Loctite on them, so most of the car didn't, but weirdly like a few pieces did, but just Loctite everything, yeah, including the set screws in the transmission gear here like just put Loctite in it just do it um, yeah so once I tightened up the steering rack because that was majorly loose that was good um, uh, yeah there weren't like a whole lot of loose screws but there were loose screws throughout the car like I was saying and yeah fix the rack and then the car was ready for um, uh, preparing the electronics and stuff I ended up choosing a Yokomo R160 ESC, which doesn't come with a fan, which is really annoying and uses an odd screw type, which I didn't have to mount the fan, uh, a spare fan I had, so that's also annoying. But anyways, I uh, mounted on the bottom part where they say to put the receiver, but I put my receiver in there, which this car no longer has because it's moved on to another car as such. So I ended up doing my own custom wiring just to get it going, had to put long, long leads on. That's just electric stuff. but. Um, the other major thing I was thinking of doing was checking the shocks and or re-oiling them But I thought no, I'll leave them as they were done at the factory just to see how well they were done and They weren't done that well because if I push the suspension Notice how one side is going down This side's a little stiff see this Look even if I push over here. It's still one side. Let's activate this side Hey, there we go. So they were a little stiff from the factory, so just the one side was. That's easily fixed, but um, yeah, not only were they, one was stiff on the one side here in the rear, when I actually did check to see how much rebound there was, there was barely any rebound uh, of the shaft coming back out of the shock. Once it was compressed, there was barely any rebound, so 
even though the shocks look good here and to the touch kind of feel soft yeah they they were a little stiff on track same goes for the front the front wasn't as bad but you can see look the rebound ready how slow that is it's almost like an active suspension because it gets slow towards the top side <laughs> slow <laughs> so yeah there's the same things that's why there's a lot of preload on the collar here just to uh, give me some kind of feel when we were driving you can also see from the suspension compressing the amount of bump steer the amount of uh, change there on suspension travel and what you can see here this amount of tow out this is from the factory this is what was set up from the factory I was pointing this out in the shakedown video that yeah the setting here is not that good and when we get into full lock look at the amount of Ackerman going on here like we've got near 90 over here but over here we're like the chase wheel is sort of being dragged along so in no point is this anywhere else sort of parallel or even like even a decent Ackerman setting it's just too excessive sure it drifts but in high angle it's really unstable and that was shown in the video it's really easy to spin this car out with this factory box setting so it wasn't the most friendly of out-of-box uh, driving experiences but the potentials big because there's lots of tuning available here so this this will be all corrected but yeah what you see here is what was set up from the factory I did not set this up all I did was undo one thing at a time to put Loctite in but I wanted to retain what was done from the factory just so we could see what they did to this because it was pre pre-built and the instruction booklet or menu manual had to be downloaded so I just didn't bother looking at it first I wanted to just see what they did um, I did measure a few things and wrote some stuff down but I'll do I'll fill out a build sheet of it out of box before I start tuning stuff and do a copy of it some people have asked for some I gotta uh, get those to them of some of the other cars I've done so I just gotta scan them in <clears throat> finish them up um, but yes so aside from fixing loose screws the steering rack being loose and then noticing these shocks were not the greatest out of box and then the steering geometry not the greatest setup um yeah the driving experience was all right it wasn't the greatest we could drift it but really couldn't like be any kind of aggressive or attack just barely get it around the track but i'm going to redo the shocks i'm going to redo the suspension settings geometry all that um and other than that those few things those major things i didn't put a body on it yet but i will the other body post magnet nice round magnet posts uh, they'll be in the back overall the car looks amazing this in blue looks really really good it's a it's a beautiful car and it has big potential uh, based on the other d5s i've driven and a couple of conversion car d5s i've driven they all got lots of potential so this one i know will as well so just little things out of the box since it was pre-assembled here you got to look for um i did uh, i did um make sure that the set screw from my pinion had loctite when i installed it in the motor did all the screws, rehit all the gears with their set screws with Loctite, took this off, did all the screws under there, um, did those as well, even uh, hit the set screw inside of here, inside the lower arm there, or the rear knuckle, so the set screw will hold the rear knuckle on the arm, and even check the drive shafts, there's a set screw, oh, I got the wrong wheel here. There's a set screw inside of here that holds this on to the pin inside there. Hit that with Loctite as well. And um, just oiled the bearings up and stuff like that. So once you um, do those things, uh, at least do all the Loctiting and stuff, car should be ready for electronics. And then um, based on my out-of-box experience here with the way this one was set up, definitely give it some kind of bench tune and uh, check out your steering geometry and make sure it's... Uh, actually workable or it's somewhat it's stuff is in the right sort of positions this is yeah too much Ackerman and stuff so you might as well give it a bench tune you might want to take your shocks apart check the oil rehit the oil they didn't even give me extra oil like from the shocks they just gave a few extra a few extra parts and stuff which is fine and there's the rear body post stickers glorious sticker sheet opera d5 sticker sheet very nice and oh original sticker d5 sheet and the opera sheet so that's nice but no there was no extra shock oil so i'm not sure what's in here based on what all the other d5 kits come with is not well d number 5000 is what's in the diff 
in the back of the diff, which is in the same one in this, and number 100 oil. It should be 5,000 in the back of that. I'll verify that on my build sheet or whatever, but number 100 oil was what was used in the, in the other cars, uh, all the other D5s I've built to date, so I'm imagining that's what's in here, which is good, nice light oil. These springs, I think, are the same ones you get in most of the other D5 kits, which I think is like a medium soft. They aren't soft soft, it's a medium-ish soft. It works, uh, definitely works, but if we put uh, we do the 50 way to bleed them properly and or change out the bladders, sorry not bladders, the o-rings in the bottom and or the pistons even, uh, they should be good. Uh, we don't have to change out the pistons but I might change out the bottom o-rings for maybe Yokomo Blue or Reeve D Red, probably the Yoko Blues or something because I think the ones that they come with, the black ones are a little too stiff, that might be why we're getting, oh sorry, that might be why we're getting a little bit of slow rebound at the top end here, see that? Yeah and <laughs> funny um so yeah definitely get suspension work tune and um I'll probably change what can i do here i can't really change position i can change one position in the bottom i can't really do anything in the top except i can straighten it out by putting a spacer here so i could do that as well that's one other thing i can do um yeah there's some there's a lot of tuning options though i can move these around change the caster a bit or zero it out and in the rear, I can straighten up the shock a little bit. Yeah, there's more There's more options on this lower arm than there are on the stock D5 arm. There's two mounting lower positions on the stock D5 uh, lower arms. These ones have four, so that's good. I can straighten that up a bit, get it a little softer or whatever. And um, yeah, because that's definitely stiff. Check everything and make sure it all moves freely. And um, after the shakedown, that is. And it pretty much did before the shakedown. Um, yeah, uh, there is, really isn't other, really any other constructor notes considering it was a pre-built car, but those few things to prep it for driving, that will go a long way down the road. You do all this stuff now before the first initial shakedown run of yours, your car will be good for miles and miles, and you'll be continuously having the smiles, which is what we want. So, um, yeah, I decided to outfit my car with some RCR wheels, the World Pros. I, where did, I always forget the name of them, so I saved the tag. The SS Reiner Type S, and they're the Chromes, Chromey boys. And I put on Reeve D uh, AS01 tires for our track, which is polished concrete. You can see the wear marks, camber wear, and that sort of stuff. It actually kind of shows you how, how well the car was transferring weight at times. One of these wheels is a little bit wobbled anyway, but um, yeah. You can tell which shock was uh, not working the best. <laughs> so, um, other than that, uh, standard and electronic procedure, and away you go. And uh, you'll have your opera on track in no time. Uh, but definitely worth doing a bench tune and doing some pre setup before that. Um, it's up to you what you want to do for your tune because this is a high end car, so you can do whatever kind of specialized tune, which you'll probably end up personalizing it at some point. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think offhand if there's anything else I've got to tell you, and I don't think so. If so, I'll write it in the the description of the YouTube uh, video post. But other than that, yeah, um, enjoy your opera because I know I'm going to soon. We're going to get lots of things going, uh, video-wise, comparisons and other stuff, and more on-track footage and more on-chassis footage where the camera is roughly about like this angle and you can see all the stuff working. I haven't done too many of those lately, but I'm going to make a new mount for that. So you can, I can mount things either to front bumpers or front body posts or a magnet one, something. I'm going to come up with something custom mounting because the GoPro mm, clip mount system only goes so far. Um, but yeah, um, yes, you got an Opera D5, let me know if you set one up for a friend or you're the track mechanic and you've done some work or done some setup and, and you like what you've done, let me know how that went, settings you used, etc. And uh, I'll try to try them out on mine. <clears throat> I got some ideas for mine as well. And I got to pick a body too. I've got a MST Lamborghini body that I uh, painted metallic blue the other weekend. So uh, that was fun. And I think that'll go on this because blue, blue, it'll match good. The magnets will go right on it. It'll look scale. And yeah, it'll be fun. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to go clear my throat. And thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, as I said. Hope to chat with you soon and more to come. Stay tuned for all of that stuff. And um, yes, have a great day. Bye.